started. So if you want to make your way back to your seats here, um, we're going to talk about something very important to all, all people, really, and especially musicians, is getting affordable health care. Um, and statistically, musicians uh, are less insured than the general population and statistically higher to have issues with addiction and mental health. Um, and there's some incredible resources available, so we're going to discuss those. Uh, locally, Athens is very lucky to have Nucci Space, um, which offers incredible um, healthcare resources, as well as practice spaces. Um, it puts on really awesome uh, fundraising events like Athens Business Rocks, which happened last week. Um, and so moderating this panel, we're very uh, happy to have the director of Nucci Space, Bob Slutby. Thanks, Michelle, um, and everyone at Protect the Athens Music. Um, I feel quite honored to be part of this and actually be able to uh, actually share the stage with uh, panelists because they're at the top of their game in our in our field. So I feel very honored to have have them here. Um, I want to introduce them real quick. Um, we have uh, Danielle Oker from. Uh, uh, Music Cares, and Tatum Alsa from uh, Music Health Alliance, and uh, Alex uh, Miola from Future Music Coalition. Is that kind of yeah. okay? Yeah. And uh, I guess if we could start, if you could tell us a little bit about uh, about yourself, how you kind of got into the current field, and some information about your each individual organization and uh, and the work that you do. Please take the opportunity to share these resources with everybody because uh, I've had that chance and, and I want to make sure that everybody else really learns about what you'll do. So maybe Dale can start up start out there. Hello, I'm Danielle Boker, and um, I actually I don't have a background in music. I kind of fell into music. My background's in counseling. And I grew up in a family that my family owns a live audio company. So my dad said I went as far away from music as I could to accidentally come back to it. Um, so, so I know a little bit about it just having grown up kind of backstage watching things go on. And, um, and basically fell into the work that I do at Music Cares through my counseling uh, experience. And Music Cares, for those of you who don't know, is the nonprofit arm of the Recording Academy. And we help individuals in the music industry in times of emergency. We like to say we're kind of like an employee assistance program for the music industry. Um, our eligibility is, is pretty basic. If you've been in the music industry in some capacity for at least five years, that doesn't mean that you've had a recording contract. That doesn't mean that you're the artist. You could be answering phones at Sony. You could be a tour bus driver. You could be a street performer. Um, but if you've been making some of your income off of the music industry for at least five years, then you're eligible for services through Music Cares. So if you were to hit a bump in the road, say you needed to go into substance abuse treatment, but you just couldn't afford it, um, or you had an emergency and went to the ER and now you have a huge bill that you can't afford, or if you missed a gig, if, if something was canceled and now you can't pay your rent, that's basically what we're here for. So, so we provide financial assistance for those in the music industry. Um, and because a lot of individuals in the industry don't have insurance, which we're going to touch on today, we do a lot of different preventative care workshops and provide information for individuals in the industry as well. Uh, one thing that some of you may have seen around town, we've started uh, working with Nucci's and, and Bob here and providing free dental care. We've done it about two or three times now. Yep, we're doing one in June, so we'll be back and, and offering free dental care for a day-long event at Nucci's um, where individuals in the industry can come and, and get their teeth cleaned for free and get x-rays and, and some fillings and things like that taken care of. So we try to provide whatever we can um, to, to the industry as, as a support to them, and we are a nationwide program. Hi, I'm Tatum Alsap, and I'm the founder and executive director of a music organization called Music Health Alliance. And what we do, um, we were founded based on need. Um, about 11 years ago, I was an artist, I started in artist management and with MCA Records, and 
Um, I had twin boys who were born. I was in the hospital for, gosh, nine weeks before they were born, and they were in the hospital for nine weeks. And I had health insurance and had a maternity um, rider, and I walked out of the hospital with a $500,000 bill. And I thought, you know, I went to Vanderbilt, I understand finances, I really thought this was done, something is so wrong with the system. So um, I joined forces with Vanderbilt Medical Center and we started to do a whole lot of research and we built a music industry relations department there. And what we found building this program is, you know, the largest issue with access to healthcare is 76% of our industry, and sorry, this is, this is our figure, so it, we didn't do a survey um, like Alex, so it, this is not scientific. This is sort of based on the Nashville um, spectrum, but 76% of the music industry has no access to group benefits or HR departments, and um, they become, we all become very vulnerable to sales predators and the racket of the health insurance world. So the Music Health Alliance was developed to help. We built a model that completely removes the profit motive. Our entire staff, we're all licensed health insurance agents, not because we want to sell anything, but because we want to understand the law. We've gone back to the root to understand how the system works, why it works. We want to know how the money flows and why it flows that way, and where are the resources for our industry. So Music Health Alliance does three things. We protect through access to health insurance, whether it's state, federal, or private market. We've walked about 300 people through the um, marketplace nationwide, and we've held workshops across the nation to help people understand what the law means for them. Then we direct with confidential guidance, um, understanding your needs, um, specifically and then helping you navigate to the direction. So we also direct, we protect, protect um, direct, sorry, and connect. And we'll connect you with those resources that you need um, to get well, stay well, so the music continues to play. And all of our services are free and they're available to anyone who's been in the music industry making a living for at least two years. Um, and those guidelines are pretty loose and we're also here to help your spouses and immediate family. So um, call us if you need us. Hello, my name is Alex Malo and I do a, a few different things that are related to music. I've, I've been an active musician for, I guess, over 25 years now. I play guitar in a band called Fan Modine based out of Chapel Hill, formerly New York. I write for a couple music publications and um, I run a recording studio called Seriously Adequate in Carver, North Carolina. Uh, but the reason I'm here today is because I work with Future Music Coalition, um, as did the person who sat in this chair before me, I guess. We own this today. Um, uh, only I, I do a very specific thing for them, instead of all the wonky policy stuff, which I'm mostly an observer of, uh, an admirer of them, uh, I, I uh, have put together something called the Health Insurance Navigation Tool, or HINT. Everything needs a good acronym, right? It doesn't count if there's not an acronym. And um, what HINT is, uh, it was, it was we, we started it with the aid of a Cummings grant, and essentially it's a, a source of information where we'll do one-on-one -on -one consultation phone calls. So people will go to our website at futuremusic.org, sign up for a HINT appointment, and get on the phone, uh, more than likely me, I'm the person who handles it most of the time. <laughs> you know how the nonprofit world is. You have a staff of one. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, what, what we can do is sort of what we, the royal we, do, is um, assess your situation and do the best we can to give you advice. Most of it's going to be fairly general, um, but send you in a direction as to how to get access to health care, and how to understand any health benefits that you may already have. So uh, I would say that a good half of my phone calls are from people who have health insurance and have no idea what any of it means. Um, that's shifting these days because um, more people are getting health insurance because they have to, and um, explaining how ACA works. The Affordable Care Act, aka Obamacare, probably 
Republicans have some less flattering names for it, I think. Um, anyway, um, so that's, that's what we're doing at Future Music Coalition to try and get, I guess we're more on the preventative side of things. We want to get people signed up so they have um, health insurance. So, um, so hopefully they're not going to need to go to <laughs> Music Cares and ask for your, for your help, but uh, we're glad to know you're there and I have referred people to you many times before. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it. I have to say, this is the most punk rock panel I've been on. I'm drinking beer and I've got a handheld mic. I don't think that's ever happened before. It's pretty great. So, yeah, so. Thanks, Sean. Well, before we get into, into our discussion, there's a couple facts and figures I want to share with you all to kind of lay the groundwork for our discussion. Um, the first being in May 2013, the Congressional Budget Office estimated that 57 million Americans under the age of 65 are currently uninsured. Um, this represents one out of five Americans in this age group. Um, U.S. healthcare spending represented uh, almost 19% of our gross domestic uh, product in 2011. 75% of our healthcare dollars are spent treating preventable diseases, such as obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, and so on. Uh, but only three, per, three cents of each healthcare dollar is spent towards prevention. Um, and then uh, U.S. spends more on medical care than any other industrialized nation. It ranks six, uh, 26 out of 36 economically developed countries in terms of life expectancy. In July and uh, August of 2013, the Future Music Coalition and the Artist Health Insurance Resource Center conducted an online survey of about uh, 34,000, uh, 3,400 artists uh, that responded, and they determined that 43% of those respondents do not currently have health insurance. That is double the national estimate uh, of the uh, of the uh, general population, according to the uh, Kaiser Family Foundation. So. To kick this off, I'm going to direct this to Alex, since this came from the, uh, since the survey from the Future Music Coalition uh, reported it's 43%. Since that's double the national average uh, of the general population, what makes musicians and artists more of a vulnerable population than, say, the, the general, popu general population? Well, it's a, it's a term I don't like using very often, but having been a musician for a long time, I think there's an intersection between musicians and the working poor. And so a large number of musicians are already living down in the margins. And so I would imagine that that has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. That we, you know, people who dedicate their life to their, their craft and music are not, which is not a very profitable thing to do. <laughs> uh, I think are, are you know not off doing things where you know you, you make what would be considered a, a normal living. Now, a lot has changed since Janu January one, uh, with ACA being really rolled out at this point, and I th I'm hoping that we're going to see those numbers change a little bit because if you are in a state where uh, well, if you're, if you're living above the poverty level, the, the subsidies are actually quite good. Where I'm seeing musicians now getting health insurance for 20 bucks. I was on the phone with somebody actually from Athens last week. And um, we were having a conversation about whether he should go with the $23 plan or the $32 plan per month. And my mind was a little bit blown. Because this time last year, I was probably having discussions with people about the $200 or $300 a month plan. You know, especially because this guy had a pre-existing condition. So I think we're going to see the numbers change pretty dramatically. Um, I, ho I certainly hope so. Some people are actually able to get health insurance now for 5 bucks and $10. Bucks. Um, an interesting catch-22 is if you're below the poverty line, and Medicare expansion isn't part of your state's plan, i.e. Georgia, i.e. North Carolina, I'm embarrassed to say, Tennessee, yeah, um, then you fall in a weird category where you don't get the subsidy. So you're penalized for being poor. I mean, that never happens, right? 
So, um, uh, so I guess, you know, assuming that musicians are making in some way or another 14, 15, 16 grand a year, um, that includes through other means, we're going to hopefully see that number drop considerably. Does the Future Music uh, Coalition have plans to possibly roll out another survey, like maybe a year or so from now? Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be a year from now because I think it's going to take a while. You know, everything's being delayed right now. You know, it's, everybody's supposed to be signed up by January 1st, and then March, well, actually end of March, and actually if you don't, we're not going to penalize you this year. And, <laughs> and then, I mean, a friend of mine who, who does health insurance, I, I don't, but a friend of mine who does health insurance, uh, has been coming to me with stories where he's been sitting down with people in the arts community because Chapel Hill's a lot like Athens. We, you know, you can't swing a cat without hitting an artist. And um, uh, where he, he and I had coffee last week, and he said, "Yeah, you know, I sat down and I told this person that I could get them health insurance for zero dollars a month." I said, and I was like, "Chris, zero, zero. He said, "Yeah, the subsidy was really good with this one particular person." I was like. So what's the problem? He's like, I don't know. They said they'd get back to me on it. <laughs> like, zero dollars, and they're going to get back to you on it. He said, yeah, I don't understand it. He said, you musicians, what can you do? And he's one, I'm one, so, you know. <laughs> Tador, Danielle, do you all have um, any thoughts on this, the, the disparity between, you know, the uninsured kind of music and artist population, the general population, you know, since the, those numbers are almost double? in our community? Uh, we see, yes, absolutely. And um, we're all pretty creative right brain, and when you try to get that left brain clicking and fill out applications that are 10 pages long or you're working with a website that seems to shut down every time you log on, it gets really frustrating and nobody's got time for that. Um, and I feel like our... Um, both sides, Republicans, Democrats, independents, whoever, I think that we have taken something that is very simple and made it very difficult. And um, whether that's intentional. The government did that? Yeah, amazing, right? Whether that's intentional or not, I have no idea. But um, what we feel is very important is that every single person understand three things. Your needs, what are your health care needs, what's your budget, and where are your doctors? If you've got doctors, if you don't have doctors, that's fine. But there are three things you need to know, and those are the three things, and you can pick a health insurance plan. And before we leave today, I'll give you some cheat sheets, kind of places to go, so you can look at the guts of the plan, so you can know if, um, for example, in the state of Georgia, um, for the Athens, um, Athens Regional Health Center, is that the big health center here? Um, they only accept two of the plans that are on the Georgia Exchange. That's really important to know because one of the, um, in Tennessee, for example, one of the plans, there's a bronze plan. So this is done in this metallic. It's real easy for us as um, coming from the music industry to understand the metallics because platinum's the best. It covers almost everything. And then there's gold and then there's silver. And silver is something you really want to know about because that's the only place where you can get the subsidies and cost sharing reductions, which reduce your monthly cost and your um, out-of-pocket expenses. So the silver and then there's bronze. Well, you can get a bronze plan, really, that will cost you absolutely nothing if you make about, I think the magic number is $11,600, and that's based on if you're self-employed, what's called your MAGI, your Modified Adjusted Gross Income. And what that is is your income minus all your deductions. And in the music industry, we have the luxury of deducting almost everything. So you can, I hate to use the word manipulate, but you can work with those numbers to get to that magic number if you're close. So you make $11,600 um, and you can get that bronze plan that costs you nothing, but it will not help you at all if it's not in the right network, or if you're a traveling musician and it's what's called an HMO, a plan that is only good in a certain regional area or with a certain group of hospitals. So it's important to understand those three things and you will not go wrong. Um, so don't let the difficulty scare you or the website 
frustrate you, there are some easy ways to get this done. So I think the frustration and the lack of understanding and the lack of uh, factual information, that's the other part of it, is there's a lot of misinformation out there. That's what I've seen as a big problem right now. I agree with you that it was complicated in some ways by you know trying to strap Medicare on and then you know kind of put the Obamacare rules on as well. But in a lot of ways, I think we can also make an argument that it's been simplified. A lot of things that we that we had to navigate through in years past, like what is and what isn't a pre-existing condition, doesn't matter anymore. That's kind of cool. Uh, how do I answer these questions on the underwriting page? Well. Uh, it's, it's simplified, it's completely streamlined. Really the only thing you're gonna be penalized for, like, you know, if you had had addiction problems in the past, that's, that was the type of thing that was going to affect your rate, right? Doesn't matter anymore. The only thing that matters uh, right now is tobacco usage. And yeah, it's not cannabis, it's always tobacco. It's not cannabis, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, you know, and the thing about that is, it's probably the least cool thing to say to a room full of musicians, but you know, tobacco, you, you have a choice in that and you probably shouldn't smoke. So uh, other than that, I mean, we have gotten to the point where um, it's easier to get health insurance in place than it ever has been. The fine print has been, you know, for the most part cast aside and um, on the subject of manipulation, I would say that a lot of times people can find a way to get themselves up to the poverty level by being, you know, on paper, by being relatively creative to where they could get the subsidy. And that's something, you know, I have a hard time um, advising people to do because I don't know if it's kosher to recommend that people say that they make more money than they do. But um, that's one of the things that, that has gotten people into the subsidy zone. One thing I wanted to ask you is, you said on the bronze plan that the network is more limited. Traditionally, I actually don't know the answer to this question. Traditionally, when you've had a plan and you've been out of network for an emergency, they've treated you at a slightly different rate usually, but it's been acceptable to expense that until you could get back in network. Is, is that still the case? It varies from state to state. Okay. Some bronze plans are in great networks and are great plans. Um, it's usually the ones that, that cost you zero, and believe me, the ones that cost you zero are better than not having anything. So if you can get that, get it. Um, but if you have a medical need, and um, it, the, um, all, all of the plans should, cover emergencies everywhere. It is really important to ask that question and find out what the guts of that policy actually say. That is, there are essential health benefits now that the Affordable Care Act says have to be covered. Mental health, pregnancy, um, medications that used to not have to be covered. I mean, those are incredible things. One of the things, though, is not that emergencies out of your network have to be covered. So it's a question that needs to be asked specifically state by state. Okay, here, here's why I ask, and, and I think you bring up a really good point, and that is that you, when you're getting your plan signed up, um, I, I know it's, nobody wants to sit on hold to ask a series of questions, particularly now, but it's probably a good idea to, to ask that specific question. Okay, I'm in a touring van, and I'm gonna be you know, driving all over the United States. What happens if I break my leg in Nevada and I'm not from Nevada? Um, I think it'd be good to get an answer on that. Here's why. Traditionally, back when health insurance plans cost a lot more than they cost now, what I've advised people is get health insurance at all cost. Just get something, and here's why. We have a really unique thing in the musicians community, the benefit concert. Um, we've all played them, we've all attended them, um, and in the past, I've seen them sort of fit into two categories, where the person we're having a benefit for has had no health insurance, and I have to say there's always been this sneaking feeling that I've had while participating that we're basically making a bunch of money, like we're making five, ten thousand dollars 10000 the vibes are good, everybody's behind it, 
but this guy is you know, like $300,000 in debt. What are we actually doing? Where is this money going to go? You know, I'm glad we're here showing this person that we love them, but what's going to happen with this money and is it really going to make a difference? Contrast that to somebody who's had like a $5,000 deductible to $5,000 out-of-pocket max, $10,000 in liabilities, all right, just to kind of cut to it quickly. 10,000 bucks, a lot of money. But, you know, $10,000 is an attainable goal. Parents, friends, the benefit concert, and all those things. So one of the things about the free bronze plan, if it's free for you or close to it, is it sets up an attainable goal or a stop loss, if you want to look at it that way, which is a very, very important thing. I cannot overemphasize that. It's a lot easier to get to $10,000 than it is to get to $550,000, which is what somebody with no health insurance you know, is facing when they're dealing with years and years of cancer treatments or things along those lines. Does that make sense? Does everybody know what I'm talking about? So basically just in the same sense that you would have like a catastrophic kind of plan yeah. in a traditional sense. Where, sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm, I, I'm sure there are people who can't afford to spend 20 more dollars a month on health insurance. I'm absolutely positive. I know these people, right? But if you could go out and get a bronze plan for five bucks or zero bucks or something along those lines, you've still put that essential stop loss in place. You've, you've put something in place that's attainable for your network of friends that I'm not so sure accountants have. You know, I don't know if they can organize benefit concert for themselves because they're not a, you know, I'm sorry, accountants. It's not like a cool line of work. You know, you can't just say like, you know, oh, one of our buddies is sick, rock concert. Everybody's like, yeah. And, you know, they come out and, you know, for two days in a row, all the local bands come out and people throw money in a hat and buy merch. And it's, it's a good thing. And you're actually getting to the, now with the ACA um, options that we have, getting the stop loss, the, uh, the catastrophic plan, I guess is what people call it a lot of times, is more attainable and absolutely significant. I kind of like how those things are brought together in this because we, we've already discussed there's going to be because of Medicare and Medicaid not being expanded, especially in the state of Georgia and, and other southern states, that there will still be a need for like those community kind of resources and also for you know getting maybe a, a cheaper plan like a you know bronze level or whatever. Through all of your work and um, in, in research, what other organizations that you know, that you've come across that, you know, have been successful kind of in their local communities at, at helping bridge that gap? Can I yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I want to go back real quick to the guy, the benefit guy or girl, because we've all played them. We've all had lots of friends. Um, I want everybody in this room to know that you should never, ever, ever be bankrupted by medical debt. If you are one of those people that fall in that crack, well, as an individual, you make below $11,600, and there is no Medicaid expansion, so you can't get health insurance, and you have a heart attack, or you are diagnosed with cancer. Um, almost every major medical center in this nation has a financial aid policy, and they will write off, if you fall below 150% of the federal poverty level, 100% of your bill can be written off. And that's for the medical centers, a lot of clinics, physicians will work with you. It's not 100%, but there are avenues and resources available. So just know that you're never, ever alone. And if you get sick, get treatment. Call us, call Alex. I mean, somebody can guide you to resources, which lead to Danielle, because she has one of the greatest resources available. I think to, to piggyback on what Tatum was saying too, um, I tell clients all the time they come to us with a particular bill and, and are asking for assistance in paying that. And if you ask, a lot of times things will be taken care of. Um, medical bills can be negotiated. And were you telling me Vanderbilt has kind of a, maybe, I don't know if you were or not, ask them two or three times? You have to get through four layers and they'll say yes, but before that, so you have to be persistent um, when you're trying to, to knock something down, but a lot of times you can. And when you look at some of those bills that are you know, $500,000 bills, they're split up into different entities. You have doctors who may be willing to 
to provide their service for free. You've got the hospital costs, the um, what's it called? The anesthesiologist. I heard somebody whisper it. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> so, so you have all those different fees that you want to look at, and I think something that we all need to do as individuals is be smart about those bills that we get and not just see that total and automatically say, oh, okay, I've got that total to pay but to look a little further into it and why am I paying for this and is this something that I actually should be paying for? Um, so, I think it's also important though, you know, th there's a certain level of quid pro quo here and that is Music Cares is an absolutely fantastic organization. I'm, they're super human people as far as I'm concerned and every single person I've met in that organization is a caring, loving, amazing human being who, I mean, they want to solve these problems that we're talking about, right? I think you, maybe not you, but any musicians that you know who are at this level where they don't have health insurance, I think you owe it to organizations like Music Cares to go out and get this stop loss type thing in place. Because presumably Music Cares only has so much money, right? So if you have to go to Music Cares and say, okay, I've got this bronze plan, man oh man, the deductible is high, you know, got all these other ancillary expenses, and I'm staring 8,000 bucks in the face. Music Cares is going to be able to respond to that a lot easier than if you show up and you go like, whoa, dude, 750,000 bucks, what am I going to do? You know, so if you can think about it as the using the health insurance industry, um, which is more accountable than they've ever been in the history of health insurance, using them to do the heavy lifting, just at least get that done. So when you do need, uh, there's no other way to put it, charity. You know, the benefit concert, music airs, anybody else, you've, you've saddled them with considerably less. I, I think you owe that to the people who are pulling for you. If, if I can be so bold as to say you owe anything to somebody, you know? So, I mean, I assume that that's the case, that that's going to be, you, you can respond to like seven, eight thousand dollar losses considerably easier than a quarter of a million bucks, right? Right, right. Yeah. and I think one of the things that, you know, we cringe a little bit when we see those huge requests where somebody has, you know, two hundred thousand dollars and they're needing assistance and we think, well, we're not even going to be able to hit the tip of the iceberg with that. Right. Um, so, you know, one thing to note, as you were saying, that basically Music Cares also is available to help people who are underinsured, which we see a lot. Those individuals who have um, a large copay or a large deductible, or you know, they need to pay something out of pocket before they can go in for a surgery. And that's usually what we'll put our focus on because our funds are limited, but we want to be able to help in the best way that we can. I don't, no, I but <laughs> uh, because we're dealing with a similar. No the the tunnel, well, I'll, I'll I'll do the best I can with okay. this one, and okay. man, please, any anybody who anybody yeah, who has do. yeah, it, it's obviously political football right now, and people are doing this just you know. No, no it's winning. Yeah, it's 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 a untenable situation. It's pretty disgusting all the way around. Um, that said. Um, I'm being recorded, so I'm a little hesitant to say this, <laughs> but but I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna. Uh, my guess is if you were to go in and you were to sign up for a plan, right, and you were to get your earnings level up to the point where you qualified for the subsidy, because it's just an answer on a on an application, right? Nobody's gonna say like, let's see those W twos, man, you know. 
What's, but I mean, when you fill, what I'm saying is when you're filling out the application for, for this, and they say, say, you know, do you make X thousand dollars a year so you can qualify for the subsidy? And you say, you know, as a matter of fact, I do. I make exactly that amount plus one dollar. Um, I don't think at the end of the year the health insurance police are going to come after you and say, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, I, uh, assuming, assuming that you're. Right. Well, but I mean, is there a way? I guess what I'm saying is, if you're close, I mean, like if you're really, really, really far off, is. Yeah. Right, right. But maybe you should make it taxable. You know, that's what I'm. That that could. Have you sat down and looked at? No, I mean, I've been, okay, here's what I have to do. I have to make copies of checks. Right. And I haven't done anything with them yet, but I'm just making copies. Yeah, but I mean, what if you were to sit down? I I think I know what you're saying about your income. Wink, wink. Um, if, what if you were to sit down and look at the cost benefit on this as far as like reporting a certain level of income to get you up to what that subsidy would mean to you in a given year? Have you done that? I haven't done the hard numbers yet, but it looks like it's probably not, still not going to be Really? Yeah, like if I, if I tallied it, it's only like two months worth, but if I projected that, it would be. Hey, I'll try to us get into like individual like questions about individual tax returns. Why don't we uh, answer a few more general questions and yeah, then we sure. can uh, do this after the panel. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. um, I, this is kind of a cause that's near and dear to my heart, so I'm going to ask actually uh, Danielle to start out with this. But um, how, first of all, is, is with mental health care, access to mental health care, addiction recovery, um, if you could tell us a little bit about what Music Care currently does, but also maybe if y'all can chime in as if we're going to see any changes in the landscape of dealing with uh, mental health care and, and addiction recovery when ACA is actually implemented. So, Yeah, within the scope of the assistance that Music Cares provi provides, um, probably about 30% of the individuals that we serve, and we serve 3,500 a year. Um, with over $3 million in aid, 30% of those are for substance abuse treatment. We help pay for somebody to get into substance abuse treatment, typically to stay in an inpatient facility for, for 28, 30-day program. Um, so we have that assistance available, uh, also outpatient programs. And those, like I said before, we help those who are uninsured and those who are underinsured. Those who have insurance don't always have substance abuse services covered within their insurance. Um, some other things that we do across the country in different, in different cities, we have aftercare groups, which are kind of like a 12-step meeting, a weekly support group that are specifically for those in the music industry. Um, so that's something once somebody gets out of treatment and in some of those cities, they have the ability to go into a weekly support group where there are people who understand. They understand touring and, and travel and how that affects your sobriety. Um, we also assist with mental, just basic mental health services. If somebody needs counseling services and they can't afford to pay for that, we, we consider that an emergency that we look at helping to provide payment on a short-term basis for their counseling services. Um, so, so those are some of the things that we provide. And also, um, I almost completely forgot, Bob, uh, safe harbor rooms. We provide uh, safe harbor rooms, which are basically a safe place for individuals in the industry to go during particular events, especially um, especially award shows. The Grammys, the CMAs will be backstage in a separate room outside of the chaos, where individuals who are working those you know 18-hour days to get the show um, off the you know, to to get the show going, they can stop in and just have a sober place to go. They don't have to try to find an AA meeting in the area. And, and a lot of times people just like to come in and say, hi, thanks for being here. I'm glad to know that we have some sober support you know, in the facility. So, um, so those are some of the things that Music Cares does currently. I'd love for you guys to tell us what you think, because I know Tatum, you already said that with the ACA, 
substance abuse services are covered, and I'm not sure exactly what would be covered, and if you can speak to that. Um, well, part of the essential health benefits now that by law have to be covered by your new health insurance policies, um, if they are ACA compliant, grandfathered plans probably don't cover this, but prior to January 2014, if you took more than, um, if you took maybe Vyvanse because you have ADD and you took Cymbalta because um, you were a little edgy sometimes um, and needed some help, you might not be insurable. That doesn't exist anymore and those medications will be covered by your health insurance policy if um, the guts of your plan do cover prescriptions, um, but by federal law, they have to be covered. At what point they're covered, it has to do with your plan and your deductible and all those things. Um, also, addiction recovery is covered as well. It is important to note that it may not cover the prettiest, fanciest facility in LA, but it will cover very, very, very good programs. So those are things that um, Bob and um, Danielle and I were talking 10 years ago. If you said addiction or you said behavioral health, people would just cringe. And that affects so many creative people and so many in our industry. And now it is recognized as a true biomedical issue and there are ways to have it paid for. So. Um, and if you do take one of those medications and you do fall into this hole where there is nothing, you can go directly to the pharmaceutical company um, if you don't have health insurance and you have limited income and get those medications for free. So no, there are solutions to everything. But as Alex mentioned, if you have the option to create that stop loss for yourself and protect your estate, you absolutely need to do that too. A lot of these plans I'm working from memory here. They limit maybe what 20 visits a year, or something yeah. like that. Is that typical? Yeah. So every other week, something along those lines. And it, and to explain in a little more detail, you were talking about maybe your prescriptions aren't entirely covered. A lot of health insurance plans um, have deductibles for drugs. So that means you know how a lot of health insurance plans have a thousand dollar deductible or a two thousand dollar deductible. $5,000 deductible, whatever, the drug component may have its own $200 deductible. Once again, this is the type of thing where I don't want to be, you know, fast and loose with somebody else's money, but $200 is something that I think would be um, an attainable goal to get to the point where you can start getting your medications at five bucks. You meet, meet the 200, get to the point, and then your, your, um, your prescription drugs become five dollars or whatever they are under the prescription drug plan, right? So, so once again, we're talking about an end being in sight, you know, sort of a stop loss again. And if there's a problem there, that's where charity and goodwill and nice people come in. I just thought of one other thing that any of these, even if the plan costs zero dollars, if it is. Um, compliant with the Affordable Care Act, the greatest thing these offer is absolutely free annual physicals. I mean, prevention, we believe prevention is secure. So you get a free physical every year and we may eliminate benefits altogether because we'll catch these things early. It includes mammograms, colonoscopies, PSA testing, all your blood work. That is free. There is no copay, nothing. So just for that, benefit alone it is worth looking into. I have, a, I have a personal story on that, in fact. I've had health insurance for my entire adult life. I've never gone without. I'm a very fortunate person. It's par partially because I'm not a full-time musician. I've always had a day job, and that's always come with some sort of benefit. That's a decision I made, though. I, I didn't think there was a living in music. I was probably correct about that, considering my talent level. <laughs> and and then I ended up, you know, getting a day job and starting my own business. Um, I, uh, being a relatively pale-skinned person, um, uh, have been going to the dermatologist every year. And last June, I went in just for my normal thing, and they said, "That right there is melanoma, man. It's got to come off." It's like. 
Melanoma is cancer, right? Yes, it is cancer. If we don't take that off, you're going to die. Okay, well, if, and it's off, and I think I'm out of the woods, I don't know. I mean, time will tell. It could pop up again at some other point. Um, but I've got a nice scar right here from where it came out. It looks like I've been in a knife fight. Um, but I'm alive because I go to the doctor every year. That's it. You know, I would have gone the way of many other people. Uh, melanoma is particularly bad. It takes you out pretty fast if you don't get on it really fast. And if you do get on it pretty fast, you're fine, you know? And so uh, had I not had health insurance and had I not gone in for regular checkups, um, I would be in a very different, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd probably be in some nasty treatment because I would have figured out later that I had cancer. So your point about preventative care is an extremely important one. I think we're gonna see a lot of stuff change in the next few years. And when we're having this conversation about uh, what, is and what is and is not our right as Americans, I think we, and whether this is the perfect solution as opposed to say um, some sort of national health plan, which is what I would have preferred. I will say that um, it's so much better than nothing. It's not eh, better than nothing. It's freaking better than nothing. It is so much better. You know, the pre-existing condition thing, the checkups, you know, it, 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 it's, it is, it, 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 even if it's the last step, it's, it's such a huge step. And don't let all the press about how it was botched on the rollout, which it was, <laughs> and how it was a pain in the neck to get signed up, which indeed it was. Just be patient and understand that a landmark thing has happened. A huge shift has happened in the past couple of years, and particularly as of January 1st. And don't take that for granted, and don't let people talk smack about it. I also think that's a good way to kind of end. If, if uh, Tatum and Danielle, if you all have any closing uh, thoughts or run a little bit little behind, so we'll go ahead and try to wrap up if, if y'all want to end with anything. So. Sure. I'd, I'd like to just mention that if, if you guys are aware of anybody or if you yourself need financial assistance and you're in the music industry or, or were at some point in your lives, um, please don't hesitate to contact Music Cares. Like I said, we're a nationwide entity. It's a very simple process, a quick application, and we can usually tell exactly what we can do to help you within a couple of days. Um, so we are there for you. Please give us a call if you need to. And if y'all have some individual questions or specific things, we'll just stay right back there and y'all can come ask and we'll pass out cards. I mean, whatever we can do to help. I think we're all in agreement. That's what we're here for. Well, I'll finish out by saying um, on March 24th at Nucci Space uh, from 11 to 8 o'clock, we're doing a information session, also open enrollment for the Affordable uh, Care Act. Uh, we're gonna have the UGA Health Navigators, which sounds like a team of superheroes, um, gonna come to New Space and help answer questions and um, you know, basically kind of guide the process. So that'll be March 24th, um, which is a Monday, I believe. But thank you very much um, for joining us today. And uh, like Tatum said, we'll be around to answer questions. So thanks.